crazy. He's crazy, wow. man. Crazy. Hey, I want to tell you this, and then Bianca, I swear to God, hold on. Dancing with Stars. I already talked about that. Tonight, though, results show. It's the results show from 8 to 9 on NBC. Huge results. You show. are into Dancing with the Stars when you write a song about the results show. Do you know what they do, though, which I don't like on the results show? Because you have your dancing the night before. It's a little long right now, an hour and a half so of Dancing long. with the Stars. I watch every minute of it. I can't stand the go okay. to commercial and then come back. Okay. And, then and then the results show, now they have musical guests and special professional dancers. Pussycat dolls are coming on tonight. Uh, yeah. All right. I have a problem with this whole oh. show, too, because I haven't really watched that much. I watched last night. Yeah. I don't like the human interest part that they add to make it longer. I like do. Master P goes to Utah, or Drew didn't know about bullfighting, so we brought in a real matador. I like that part better than I like waiting for commercials for the scores to come back, because can I tell you something? Right, I agree. I change channels when they go to commercials, and sometimes I forget to come back. But if they cut yeah. out that stupid segment that they filmed, they could go right to the that's results. True. No, if they just went to the results after they danced. Right. Okay. That's what I mean. They don't need that filler. It'd make it longer. I like it. It's too long. I don't care if Master P went to Utah. Or he I like the ballerina matador. dancing. Made me chuckle. Yeah, Drew got the most points last night, number one, and then Stacey Keebler tied to Lisa Rinna for number two, just in case you missed some of the scores. And there's him over yeah. here. Well, he loves yeah. it. Anyway. Dancing with Stacey Keebler is my favorite show. Uh, I don't know if you uh, guys have plans this weekend, but I guess I know what I'll be doing from 2 to 6 p.m. tomorrow. What's that? What? Tomorrow's Saturday, right? Yes. Well, from 2 to 6 p.m. on ABC, I'll be watching the Winter X Games. Oh, those are fun to watch. I don't even like sports when I watch those. The Winter X Games 10 from 2 to 6 tomorrow on ABC. Oh, fun. and you know what starts in a couple weeks is the uh, Winter Olympics. That'll be cool, too. Oh, great. Yeah. Because God knows every time I see there's some chick on a Bally's commercial where uh, my... 24-Hour Fitness, the one where they're working out and it's yeah, a stand yeah. on the podium or yeah, whatever. Yeah, he and... knows that first girl, and then there's another girl for a Visa commercial. He knows her, yeah. and then there's another girl he boned and... <laughs> And it was kind of sketchy how she landed that one jump. Oh. <laughs> oh, God. Today on Martha! What's up with Martha today? Uh, tips on organizing your junk drawers and properly storing your utensils. Hard-hitting Martha Stewart. That's a damn television show. Mm-hmm. Properly storing your utensils, stench. She's a billionaire. <laughs> yeah, from that. How to store your utensils. And you buy the handy Martha organizer at uh, Kmart. Exactly. Right. In this it in lovely, drawer. like, green or whatever that green uh, color that is. That was actually a really good Martha impression. It was. That was pretty good. Yes, you should see my prison Except scene. Except you sounded like this. She talks know. funny. She does talk funny. Okay. Oprah. Uh, <laughs> Oprah was a bitch yesterday with that poor guy that uh, he, um, he enhanced his memoirs. Here's my only problem with Oprah. Okay, first of all, she wanted to look like a superhero, like she always does. So she called him out on his memoirs. Um, a Million Little Pieces is the name of the book, I think. Yeah. And um, he enhanced some parts of it, uh, like a lot. 14 pages. Right. <laughs> and um, and it was, and she was just the biggest C word yesterday on that show. I mean, the biggest C word I've ever seen. It's embarrassing. It's just embarrassing to say that this is a, a uh, an autobiography, which he didn't. He said it was a memoir, so it's just from your memory. Right, and they do that all the time. They enhance stuff to make yeah. it a little all more All the time. I mean, if she – here's my point. If she is this upset about him writing some, some stuff to, to – what am I saying? Like boost it, you know, yeah. to hype it up or whatever. Put some extra cheese on it. Then she better freak out. Every day at reality television. Right. Yeah. Because they call it reality, and it is not reality uh, at all. But does she ever have reality people on? Because Oprah's trying to be so, like, the top of the no, top. No, but she's saying now that books should have, like, a warning kind of thing on it. It says that this is not really a memoir. Based it should on a be true based story. on. <laughs> yeah. Based on instead of memoir. And uh, I'm like, if you're freaking out about this, then you should jump into the reality window, reality television. Because... We know they edit it. We know they make up crap. We know that our my own old partner was like, I'm going to be on a reality show. i got to think of some stuff to do. I'm going to get my whatever license. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah this, this class and, and that class. Me, I, here's where I'll end up. Right, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So. I mean, exactly. So, I, you know, she should jump on that bandwagon. And then it also irritates me a lot. She's like, you lied to the people. You have lied to the people. And yet our president, Clinton, stood in front of everyone and said, I did not have relations with that woman. He didn't. <laughs> <laughs>
technicality. But she's more upset about a guy <laughs> lying and you lied to the people than our own damn president saying I did not have relations with that it, woman. It's pretty weird with people. And I she's think though, it's just her, her trying to protect her reputation as because once she talks about a book, it, it so to speak, goes platinum. Well, it's, uh, it sells. I saw this on television. It had 50,000. It ran 50,000 copies. Mm-hmm. And then after she talked about it, 3.5 million. Wow. That's a quite a little. But and I don't know a lot about this book, but isn't it about his experiences in rehab? Or yes. Least, but so it probably helps some people, right? So even it if helped he, a million people. If he made up part and made it more tragic and and dynamic, it probably helped people more. She's so upset because he said he had two root canals without Novocaine. Right. And she was appalled because how can you do that? And she, it, it, it was a red flag to her. And then she was flipping out. Maybe like, it was symbolic of just meaning that he, you know, would endure. But I mean, you know what? I think actually Christine has a better point. Put Christine on hold because she has the best point of all. Christine? Uh, yes. Christina or Hi. Christine? Hi. Hi. Uh, I, I'm reading what they wrote that you, you're saying, and you have the best point of all. <laughs> uh, you know what? She always, it's always about Oprah. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, you know, she, she's acting. She's going, she's carrying on. This guy wrote a book, baby. It's called The First Amendment. <laughs> I know. And did you see her overact? Oh, yes. And she, oh, she's such a drama queen. She should have put her hand on her forehead and leaned back and like, oh, I can't believe it. It's so embarrassing. Oh, I should have brought in the, uh, the audio from it because she just kept going, it's it's not sad. It's not sad. I'm not sad. I'm embarrassed. Ooh. And she just made herself look worse. You know what I, I hated her. I hope the guy goes back to rehab now because of Oprah. Well, you know what he said? <laughs> if there's a gun backstage, I'm going to use it. Oh. I hope he does something really crazy. And we blame because Oprah? Because we blame Oprah. Because that bitch was a C word yesterday. Well, here's what I, oh, really I lost hated her. Oprah, Oprah should have so done that with Tom Cruise. She should have been shocked and embarrassed when Tom Cruise acted right. like an yeah. idiot, and she sat there laughing at him and not calling him out on like, "Hey, why are you being such a weirdo on my set? I'm Oprah." Right, and right. why not? And I'm still <laughs> mad at her for not taking it for Brooke Shields. Yeah. yeah. Uh, really, you know, all this guy did was, you know, he had some problems in his life. He tried to get himself together, and he wrote a book. Exactly. I mean, she is you acting know, like he's destroying our world. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and, you're, and you're acting like he's he's uh, Oliver North. <laughs> yeah, but yet she didn't put so, uh, as much time and effort of the president of the United States looking at it into all of our eyes, saying <laughs> I, I, had, I did not have relations with that woman. She's oh, put, yeah, yeah, he gets away with it oh, because he's a big name. I, she's yeah. put more, Cruz that's what I, name. you know what, that's what yeah. I was thinking, Christine. She can just destroy this little man. And make I'm, herself look like big man on campus. Yeah. She can't destroy Tom Cruise, and she can't right. destroy Clinton. A little Clinton. author is just no, a little she, author. Yeah. You know what? She could. She chooses no, she not can't. to because it's a buddy-buddy she can't. deal. Not Clinton and not Cruise. She could have put a hit on Tom Cruise. She I could. Think, to nope. Make him really I know hurt. he's too popular, and he, ha- <laughs> he has too much going on. Yeah. Look so, at Matt Lauer did it. I respect Matt Lauer for getting up there didn't and work. put it in his face. You know. But dude, Oprah's the most powerful woman in the free world, man. She really. But is. he can't. She can't destroy. Cru- I mean, like but, she said, Matt Lauer what, and everybody. She trying. has a responsibility, though. You know, she has a. Re- if she yeah. is the most powerful woman in the world, then she has to be. Uh, has well, a that's what she was doing to be yesterday. responsible with it, and then and not just do things because how it affects her. Oh my God, she if was the she biggest really C yesterday. To be the great woman that she thinks she is, she wouldn't make things about her. She just didn't have to. I mean, talk about embarrassing. She just didn't have to humiliate him and just squash him like a bug yesterday. Oh. Uh, she looked. She looked ridiculous. I mean, here's this guy. He's just sitting there and he's answering her questions and he's being quiet and 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 she's just, you know. Oh, I hated her yesterday, and I am a big Oprah fan. But she was just an evil, evil bitch yesterday, and he just kept drinking water. I felt bad for him. It was vodka. (laughs) (laughs) She's <laughs> 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 just like drinking vodka. Oh, God, Oprah's killing me. Christine, thank you for your phone call. Hey, you know what? Maybe it should have been vodka. She might have been more interesting. Yeah, yeah, she was just a bitch, and I hate her hair. Anyway. <laughs> wow. Hey, Bianca? Yes? I heard that you cut your husband's scissors, uh, moles off with scissors. Oh. <laughs> um, okay, he has this weird mole on his shoulder with, like, three hairs growing out of it. <laughs> back to me and I picked up some scissors and I wanted to cut the hair off without him knowing but he moved oh. <laughs> and I cut them off. Oh. <laughs> he was so mad. And I believe those are very, very vascular and they bleed all over the place. They bleed a lot. I had to hold um, a tissue on his shoulder for a long time oh. before I could put a band on it. Oh, did it ever clot off? 
Yeah, it was fine. Did he turn but... around and smack you? Yeah, no, he yelled at me. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been maybe instinct to me to turn around and just Can blow I? on you. Randy's like, what are you doing? And I just, oh I couldn't say God. anything. I, and now I is the mole all like funky looking? <laughs> no, it's fine. It grew back weird looking, but. Yeah, that's what I mean. It grows oh. back all weird. It was already weird. That was the problem. <laughs> hmm. um, you know, because I told you guys this eight million times, but I had a mole on my butt. <laughs> and my husband, you know, he was a doctor, so I said, can you cut the mole off my butt? Right. And so, just to make it real fast, and, and so he brought it and he anesthetized it, and then he cut the mole off on my butt, uh-huh. and we were both really drunk. Oh. Yeah, but he probably oh, used, so like, clean, a clean scalpel. No, he yeah, he brought a there. scalpel, but it was bleeding everywhere and everywhere and everywhere and everywhere, and then he, uh, he, he bandaged it up, and then we went to the Little League game the next day for my stepson. Uh-huh. And I sat down and I felt my butt just get really wet and it broke open. It was oh, bleeding no. everywhere. Oh my God. Oh, so God. we got in the car, we went to Walmart and we got nasal spray because it has something in it that clots off your whatever. Right. right. It has nasal sprays that shrink the, the whatever. Yeah. And so I'm in the Walmart parking lot with my pants pulled down and he's spraying <laughs> nasal spray on my ass and <laughs> trying that to get it to clot spray. off. <laughs> That's good to know in case I cut off another mole. Yeah, yeah, get nasal spray. It has to have something <laughs> special yeah. in it, whatever it is, and it makes the, the little membranes shrink. You wouldn't oh, know that God. if you weren't a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but do you know what it's like to be in Walmart parking lot with your pants pulled down, having somebody spray nasal spray on your ass? <laughs> yeah, it's a Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> it's always, always a pleasure when you stop by, Mark. <laughs> yeah, we have lots of friends here. Lots of friends, including Howie Mandel! Yeah! Yeah! Howie! Oh, come on. Sit down. That's not necessary. How are you? We haven't talked. You never write. You never call. I thought we were friends. I, I never talk. I never write. I never call. Nothing. You just, but you know what? friends. You just came in. You used our air, uh, airwaves to, like, you know, use it to, to promote whatever you needed to promote, and then you just left us here. Dumped us. I'm sorry. Now I feel horrible. <laughs> I'll buy you something. Okay. Hey, I like that show, Deal or No Deal. It's uh, it's it's huge. Yeah, it is really. How much can they they possibly win? Like ten million or something? Some crazy. Well, right, last a time million? it was a million. I think it's going up. But okay. they don't have to. The beauty of the game is there's no skill involved. You can be a rock and win a million dollars. And they have. Oh. Here's the deal. It's uh, it's called Deal or No Deal. Perhaps you've seen it, and maybe not yet because it's pretty new. And Howie Mandel uh, hosts it. By the way, they need to work on the edits, in my opinion. But anyway. Um, <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll let him know. Because <laughs> sometimes I'm like, okay, that was so dubbed in right there. Do you ever notice that? Uh, yes, because I do the dubbing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that would be... I not notice that if you heard something that was dubbed in and you heard my voice behind my head saying something that didn't sound like the thing I said right before, don't you think I would notice it? Yeah, I would just get a new audio guy because he's doing a half-assed job of matching well, y'all. that's the beauty of it, and that's what I'm here to promote. Uh, <laughs> Deal or No Deal is coming back February 27th for a week right after the Olympics on NBC with a brand new audio technician. Yeah. Thank God! Now yeah. you don't have to see the audio edits yeah, anymore because right. that's all I do is pick those out. It's kind of a thing I play. But well, and then... you're in ra- radio, that means sound is your expertise, right? But yeah, but my my fiance is a snowboarder, and he saw, he even said, "Oh my god, that was such a bad audio edit." And he doesn't know anything about that. Well, that's how bad it is, Howie. I'm trying to help. You are, but you know what? And and it is a help. You have no idea how you have helped this show. I am trying <laughs> to help you. I, I really am, because I love the show. That's all. But regardless, you know it was like number one. It's a huge success. Yeah. Well, you know huge. why? It's cool. Because you have long, leggy supermodels with uh, little briefcases. All right. Uh, right. That's something for everyone. There's hot little Maxim bikini models ho- holding the cases with the money. All you have to do is pick a number, and virtually that's it. You could possibly be a millionaire within 10 seconds of play. There's no trivia. There's no stunts. Yeah, you but then be there's a moron. A, there's a whole decision on if you should go on because then there's only so much money left, and then you could go down to zero. Well, you can never go to zero. You can't win nothing. You can always win something, so you have to decide when you want to leave. You can always leave. Like, I offer you money. The banker actually offers you money. You know, the, the ultimate in questions, what happens is you pick one case, and that case is yours to keep if you choose to keep it, and hopefully there's a million dollars in it. The way we find out whether there's a million in it, we start opening the other cases. If those cases, if we get down to two cases and there's only two cases left with a dollar or a million, you don't know which one's yours. And I offered you a half a million dollars mm-hmm, to go home mm-hmm. now. What would you do? Would you take the half a 
a million dollars, or would you go for a 50-50 shot of being a millionaire? I know. That's what I love about Man. the show. And then you guys call up that guy from Charlie's Angels, and he's up in the, you know, he's up in the rafters. The banker. Yeah, yeah. the banker. Eh? He looks like he's like a Charlie's Angel guy. You don't get to see him. No, oh, he's cool. in the dark. Yeah, he's in, he's in the dark. He's like, hello, he's Charlie. In his own little booth. Yes, Angel. Maybe he's a sperm banker. <laughs> I, I don't know, but he's just up there in that little booth, and he looks really scary. It reminds me of when they tried to marry off the bachelor or uh, that guy, you know, who wants to marry a millionaire. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Though, you never saw him. Yeah, you, you know, never it's saw weird, him. Weird though. That guy, even though you see him in silhouette, I saw him in person. He's always in silhouette, no matter where he goes. <laughs> even if he's sitting beside, that's his look. <laughs> That's not lighting. <laughs> now, Howie, are you in the airport right now? Yes, I am. Oh, where are you, where are you going? The Toronto. Oh, what are you wearing? Um, just uh, <laughs> just a, a teddy and a <laughs> knee socks and a kilt. Oh, nice. very nice. Very, they <laughs> love that in Toronto. That's how I travel there. casually. Now, I understand y'all are having a casting call, correct? Yeah, over in Orange, Irvine, I think, at yeah. Buster, Dave & Buster's. Right. Now, the problem with this is I, it says noon to five, Dave & Buster's, uh, but it doesn't tell me what day. I think it's today, isn't it? I, or is it tomorrow? It says casting call. It says, Chris, can we put this on the website? Sure. Casting call for NBC's Deal got, or No Deal. I got, I got paperwork here. Okay. Let me I'm really it. sorry I don't have that. I thought you would have it. You it thought, says 12 to 5. I thought we had it. You know, if you go to NBC.com, they'll probably have it. You know, on NBC.com, you can play the game. But let me see. It's uh, Dave and Buster's. Uh, I just have the name. Me too. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> to, to discuss Dave and Return to Irvine, Dave and Buster's at 71 Fortune Drive. I got the address. Irvine, 92618. Yeah, I even have the zip code. <laughs> so it's good to see that his people sent us that because it's apparently the same sheet of paper. You, you need no skill to get on the game. It's yeah. just trying to find the place to sign up. Here's yeah. what mine says. Cast and call for NBC's Deal or No Deal. Irvine, California, noon to 5. Dave and Buster's 71 Fortune Drive. Irvine, 92618. And, of course, info is on NBC.com. Right, so uh, th- apparently we're telling, we're giving you the information of where to get information. Well, you have to guess. It's like the briefcase. Do you want to go today or tomorrow? Maybe you'll get on, maybe you no, won't. Remember when I said there's no skill involved? Maybe I lied. Yeah. <laughs> Sometime between noon and five at Dave & Buster's. I mean, someday. We don't right. know when. Between now and who knows. People have been coming up to me since the show originally aired. You know, it's gonna, it aired for five nights in, in December. I said, how do I get on? And, and the answer is, I, I don't know, apparently. <laughs> I know where you can go, but I don't know how. <laughs> Hold on. I think we can. <laughs> it's Saturday. Saturday, Howie. Pardon me? Somebody just looked it up on the website. Okay, Saturday. 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 But go to NBC.com if you have any other questions. You can play the games and you can see the girls. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, you try to hook up with any of those? Yeah, I actually, they had me so that I would have a relationship, you know, and know their names and that. They had me stay with them for a week and a half. I was wondering at a, how. At a retreat in Mammoth. How do, do you, I mean, I know you have an earpiece. Do they tell you what I girls are? I have no are, earpiece. Oh, you don't? No. You memorize all those girls' names? It, uh, the names are easy. It's the numbers I don't know. That's why they have to put them on the cases. You really I can never know, remember. You know can, those girls' names? Yes. You don't know 26 people's names? No. You don't know 26 people's names. I would never be able to. It's 26 men staring at me. I would never remember their names. Well, that's because you you just see it it comes on at 8 o'clock, and then you just think I know their names. But the point is, I spent a week. I was there for a week working and doing the game over. I know their names. Mandy. Yeah. And you have to remember, there's a mole man, mole Mandy. Jamie's been at the radio station for eight years. I don't have their last names. I don't know their last names, but I remember their names. and And the numbers are written on the cases, so that's how I read those. Right. And I have no earpiece. I'm working without an earpiece and a bad audio person. Yes. Wow. I'm just trying to help you, Howie. Don't be upset. I'm not upset. Yes, I'm you not seem upset. upset. You seem a little upset. And pissed. I would imagine, and all that we ask, and we discussed this before, if you're going to be a contestant and you want to come on the show and they should bring you, wash your hands. Yeah, wash your hands. Yeah. Because Howie's a germ fanatic. Don't touch Howie. <laughs> He's a... But I was hugging the contestants. I didn't shake their hands, but I'll hug them. I'll touch them. I, I know, and I was, I was laughing because every time I watch it, I'm like, oh, Howie went in for a hug, and oh, that girl's going to kiss him. He's going to flip out. When you heard the when you heard lines being dubbed in, that was they were just covering the original lines of me going, "Ooh, do I have to shake his hand." I know, <laughs> and then you have to go and scrub. Right. Do you go and scrub after that show? Um, I scrub just in life. <laughs> I scrub after every show, after every meal, after every. It's Howie. He is Howie. Do you eat the airplane food? No. Oh no no! It's been touched by by flight attendants. I don't touch anything. I have a <laughs> I have a sheet that's behind me that's just behind me between me and the actual seat. Howie has a professional toucher. 
That's cool. <laughs> I will hire somebody. To hire. <laughs> All right, Howie. So it's tomorrow. We just found out. Noon yeah. to five. Dave and Buster's casting call for NBC's Deal or No Deal. Again, noon to five. Dave and Buster's, and that's the one in Irvine. Thank and you look, for calling the show. I'll coming back on NBC February 27th for a week. Awesome. Cool. And we'll probably talk to you then, huh? Okay, definitely. All I'll right. come in, though. Okay, All thanks, right. Howie. Thanks, Howie. Bye. Bye. Have a great Bye. flight. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, as we wait for Seth Meyers, who has a new movie out, uh, we will take all your phone calls because a buttload of people want to call about different things. So we will take those now. How about that? Yeah, mm-hmm, good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's Friday. Loving the Friday. Here's Terry. Hi, Terry. Hello. My son has a question for you, Jamie. Okay, Terry. Um, Jamie? Yes, Terry. Can I go? Is the mummy ride open or draft and park open? What's huh? your name? Caleb. Caleb? Yes. How old are you, Caleb? Two. Four. <laughs> are you four or two? Two. You're two? No. <laughs> I love this kid in Desperate Housewives. He's the one they lock in the basement. You're two? Yes. You're, are you four? Two. No. Five? Okay. no. You're four, Caleb. No, I'm two. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Caleb, you're four. No, I'm two. Why do you think you're two? Don't you want to be a big boy? Yes. Like that, you know, that fat guy gained a lot of weight, now he's skinny. (laughs) (laughs) Wow, maybe you are two, Caleb. (laughs) Caleb, you're four. Nope. Uh What was the question? Can I bring my lunch to Universal? Is the ride are the rides open? Yeah. I believe they are. Have your mommy take you right now. Yeah. Tell her that you want to go right now to Universal yeah. Studios. Oh. And tell why is that your baby? Hey, tell your mommy you want to go to Universal right now. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to Universal right now. Oh, yeah, we're going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right now. And make it snappy. And then say to your mommy, congratulations <laughs> on your drinking problem. <laughs> oh. Hey, Caleb. Caleb. What's, Caleb. There's a question for you. No, no, I There's a question. She's asking a question. Mommy, is this my future? Yes, yeah. We have Jamie has a question. Is this my future? Yes. Yeah. Big time. Something. We're going to say bye-bye. No. Oh. Wait, what's yeah. your question? He wants to ask you something. <laughs> Let him ask you. Oh. Mommy, it- don't forget our, our um, passwords. Don't password. forget the passwords. Yeah. What are they, <laughs> Caleb? Yeah. What are the passwords, Caleb? <laughs> don't forget we are right. Oh. Uh. Hey, Caleb, what? does your mommy uh, have a drinking problem? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to tell everybody today, my mommy has a drinking problem. Okay? Hello, my mommy has a drinking problem. Did you smack <laughs> him? She just hit him. <laughs> she smacked that kid. Oh, oh look what you God. did. Oh, my God. Okay, gotta go. Oh, sorry. Wow. <laughs> You see a little kid with a black eye on uh, Revenge of the Mummy or whatever today? <laughs> Jamie did that. Why'd she hit him? Because she was out of booze. <laughs> oh, God! Oh, my God! Wow. I think he fell over. He yeah, fell I over. I think he fell, too. He, I don't he, think she he hit turned her. around and run and fell over. Are you sure? I'm sticking to that story <laughs> if it kills me. <laughs> He, he was crying. I fell down <laughs> right and hurt when he, myself. Yeah, what are the chances he falls over right at the word drinking problem? <laughs> he was excited. He was jumping when oh, he was doing it. Ow, that hurts. Melanie. <laughs> hey, guys. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Go, <coughs> go ahead, Melanie. So I was at the Biggest Loser audition <sighs> in San Diego yesterday. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, um... We had, there were 1,500 fat people that showed up to audition. Yeah. I heard, and there was a riot. Well, yeah. Well, the thing is, I mean, how much of a riot can there be when there's 1,500 fat people? We don't move very fast. Hey, have you yeah. ever seen 1,500 fat people in one donut? Yeah, it's like an <laughs> elephant <laughs> well, stampede. That's, that's what I said. You know, if they wanted us to leave, they could have just bought the ice cream truck. We all oh. would have followed it. Oh, oh why? so what happened? So we're there, and... Every, I mean, there were people that slept overnight, and you've got people just everywhere. There's the longest line I've ever seen in my life of fat people. And um, and right about the time they're supposed to start the audition, they came around and announced that they weren't going to have the audition, that there were too many people there. Uh-oh. I guess oh. 50, the sight of 1,500 fat people was overwhelming. Oh. For, it was actually for, the smell of donuts. 
Yeah. Well, <laughs> the funny part was you would have thought Dave and Buster's wanted us there because they're a food place, right? Yeah. 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 Well, Too I mean, many, yeah, but you guys are overwhelming. Yeah, they only have yeah. so many hot wings. Or so they many deep fryers. Been, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're afraid we're going to run in the kitchen and, and raid it. food at the buffet. <laughs> yeah. So, wow. Anyway, the police said they were going to arrest us if we didn't leave. But, you know, it takes a while to... To get first. To theater, set people <laughs> off of the property. We don't move very fast. Oh, oh my God. They were going to arrest you if you didn't they leave? They said if we didn't leave, they were going to arrest us. Okay. So we thought, well, we'll just sit down and lock arms. They won't be able to move us. Is that what Because the news report got that there were arguments and, like, shoving, and people started getting unruly, and they were like, all right, now we're going to arrest you. Get out of here. But you know what? Actually, there there, um, there wasn't any unruliness at all. That was, I mean, I don't know. Maybe just the sight of fat people moving around looked unruly. <laughs> 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 All right, hold on. Here's Stephanie real fast. <laughs> Stephanie? Yes? I understand so that you're having the worst day ever. Uh-oh. I was so excited because I got paid yesterday, and today was Friday, and I was so happy. I love Fridays. And I took my boyfriend to work, and now I'm stuck on the side of the road. My car broke down. Oh, are you still right there? I'm still here. I'm waiting for the tow truck right now. Where are you? I'm stuck in the wonderful city of Santa Ana, so I'm kind of like ducked down. I'm a oh, cute little nice. Cuban blonde girl and kind of scared. <laughs> yeah. Get in your car and lock the doors. Yeah. Oh, I am. Trust me. And that's when I was just sitting here, and I'm like, I've got to turn on Star. And so I turned it on, and I just wanted to thank you guys for being so wonderful and for brightening up my day a little bit more. Yeah, getting that little kid beat, that was funny, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I've been listening, and everything is absolutely hilarious. <laughs> Stephanie, why does your boyfriend have a car? No, he does. He had just asked me to drop him off because he was a little bit low on gas, and he didn't, we were running late. He didn't want to go get gas and be late. Aww. So I was being nice and decided to drop him off, and here I am now. I'm stranded. <laughs> oh, that sucks. All right, well, you know what? I can give you a dildo. Oh. Yay! 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 From JamieWhite.com for your Valentine's pleasure. As if you weren't screwed up already. No, this is going to give her an <laughs> orgasm and make her day way better. All right, so Stephanie, hold on. Oh. I will. Thank you. You guys roll. We, we roll. roll. She sound like a dildo user. Yeah. <laughs> Jack, was the microphone on right then when I cussed? Yes. No, I didn't hear you. Okay, great news. Swear. Great, great, they great. Got that little kid beat. Uh, hi, Seth Myers. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, good morning, everybody. Hi, yeah. who are you? John Cho. Oh, they don't even tell me you're coming, dude. That's not cool. That's I I'm I'm livid. I I'm livid for together. you because I have. I have... <laughs> if you see John Cho, <laughs> Seth Myers behind him, or vice versa. <laughs> yeah, because that, that's that's really sad because I see you're you know you're like a big deal and stuff and nobody. Yeah, tells I'm a you. huge deal, He's and no one ever tells anybody. You're He's like a way in... bigger deal than me. You're the in Seth's shadow. Yeah, what's up with that? That's because of the seating and lighting in here. <laughs> yeah, you, even ha- you even have your back to him. Exactly. Well, you yeah. hate him. I don't hate him. I just am enjoying he- that. Wow, it's icy ignored. in here, bro. Yeah, it's, it's icy. getting a little icy. Who gets yeah. top billing in the movie? Um, Seth. Seth. I, I, yeah, oh, way to go, Seth. Seth. Yeah, Seth. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, you it's, have your. But it's, you know, it's not top. They're next to each other, so. <laughs> you have your back to him, and nobody told me he was gonna be here. They actually yeah. write Seth Meyers over John Cho on the movie poster. <laughs> yeah. And everyone knows everyone knows John from uh, Harold and Kumar. Yes, yes. Uh, absolute yeah. awesome movie. Thank go you. To, go to yes. White Castle. Yeah, yes. you exactly. have to add that, and then no, I really know it. You just say Harold and Kumar. They went somewhere. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's like a trip. You add that White yeah. Castle, and all of a sudden, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, now I know it. <laughs> all right. So anyway, does he just follow you around? Is that why you hate him? I don't hate him. <laughs> right. I, but get I mean, this is clear. he annoying? <laughs> I just can't find any reasons to like him. <laughs> <laughs> is he just like a gnat that you're like just? No, he's no. a good friend. Oh, yeah. all right. Well, hey, I don't know. I'm just no. asking. Like, what do I know? All right. So here you are. Yeah. It's uh, Seth Meyers and um, and the guy that follows him. John right. Cho. John, John Cho, Cho, right? And it's good. the movie is called See This Movie. We wanted <laughs> it to be instructive and easy for people to remember what we wanted them to do with our movie. Right. We and, to see it. And you know that some people are just stupid and they'll go, what? Right. Right. Have you run into that? <laughs> like have you run into that? Because it happened uh, earlier for me. So we just... haven't run into that yet, no. Because no. I thought it was just an error on our producer's part of writing it down like to see this movie. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. You don't know, but what's the movie called? It's called well, See This Movie. I right. see why you thought your producer made an error since you didn't even know two of us were coming in here. No, I didn't. So, yeah. I, no, I, that, I, that was our talent bunker. Oh, I see. I really <laughs> apologize for that. I oh, have no, no idea. Come on, I'm just, yeah, yeah, but I'm when just you kidding. have to come in and go, hey, who are you? I'm yeah. sorry. Right. That's cool. It's cool. We're I'm, a professional I'm, I'm Seth's broad- employee. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we're a professional broadcast facility. He's my co-star and personal assistant. And I say to a guy that's on a microphone, hey, who are you? Who are you, co-star of the movie? Uh, it was a really nice cover by you. Yeah. 
know who he was, and the best you can come up with was who I make you? delicious meals that are in the zone you really for Seth. <laughs> You know, I, I could have been cooler, but I, right. that's not who I am. I just right. say, hey, who the hell are you on? Why are you on a mic? And that's yeah. just, I'm sorry. That's perfect. No, it makes sense. I almost did that when you walked in the room. Yeah. Well, no, but that happens. Yeah. I'm not a super yeah. duper star like you. Yeah, right now, I'm yeah, super duper. Yeah, no, you're super duper. All right, so <laughs> Seth Meyers, by the way, you, you know him because he's on Saturday Night Live. And uh, God, you've been on there forever, huh? Well, not forever. Five years. Five years. That, yeah. <laughs> I guess that's all. I haven't done anything else for five years, so. Yeah, just, <laughs> <I've done> <laughs> <laughs> just a steady paycheck, a 401k plan. Exactly. Very yeah, nice. No. Great Thanks. investment opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's really fun. I really love it. So I'm not going anywhere. And then so you, you meet John and you're like, hey, John, you seem like a cool guy. Let's do a movie. Is that how it went? That's how all movies work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the co-stars meet each other. You're right. <laughs> they decide to do a movie. <laughs> and then at some together. point, it was a moment. It was a right. momentous yeah. day at Jamba Juice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's the same way at everything. Yeah. And then you guys go to the producers and the directors, we right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. exactly. Yeah, you can, the magic here. You turn cast some cameras yourself on. first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep, that's how movies work. Uh, okay, and so what is this movie about? See this uh, movie. See this movie. I play, uh, John and I play filmmakers who are idiots and we talk our way into the Montreal Film Festival to show our movie but we haven't made a movie yet so we're in Montreal trying to shoot a movie in time to screen it at the Montreal Film Festival. Uh -huh. And the movie is uh, the movie that you're watching is actually the movie that we're shooting. Right. Um, huh? and, and the documentary okay. footage. Yeah. <laughs> it's a movie about making a movie. Exactly. Oh, right, yeah. right, 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 it would right. be like if you had a Hot Pocket and there was another Hot Pocket inside. <laughs> Do you like Hot Pockets? I mean, yeah. Yeah, see, I don't like Hot Pockets. like lava. I, well, Hot Pockets is a thing. I would never buy a Hot Pocket, but anytime somebody's like, can I get you a Hot Pocket? Right. Like, that's fantastic. I mean, they are convenient to have in your freezer, you know, in case you have company over that's hungry. Sure, right. yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> For company. Right. For company. But that's the, the whole to serve on the fine china. <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, because the yeah. thing, like, no, when, like, there's a stoner friend coming over and, you know, they're oh, a pot yeah. smoker, yeah. like, dude, got something to eat? And you're like, Hot Pocket. See, and, that's and why I stopped having Hot Pocket. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I hate it when stoner friends come over. You don't want to be that's known also, as a house that holds pot. South Park DVDs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you don't want to be no. I have become the house that has the hot pockets, that's, so that's no good. Yeah, yeah those yeah. people that are high just stop by. It's like a, I have tennis shoes hanging over my wire mm -hmm. above my house. It means I have hot pockets. Oh, I, I didn't oh. know that, that was that's a thief. Okay. What that means. Yeah, yeah, the tennis cool. shoes on the cool. the phone wire. Yeah. I have hot pockets. For all you drifters, by the way, out there listening. <laughs> right. I, well, you know, hot pockets they last forever, and if you have no food in your house, you can always go to. They're a go-to food. I want to point out that you're wearing a Hot Pocket sweatshirt and I'm pretty sure you're wearing Hot Pockets. I love Hot Pockets. I I mean, that's, I hot Pockets to, corporate yeah, spokesman exactly. in the corner. <laughs> I feel like a Hot Pockets shirt. I like the jingle, really. Hot Pockets. See, how fun? Pretty simple. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's hot. Can you try? Uh, no. Next time I know I'm in a Hot Pockets I'm like, that's my voice. <laughs> that's my thin, musical yeah. voice. Hot Pockets. <laughs> it's just kind of fun to say that, that's all. Yeah. Um, by the way, we also wanted to ask you a couple of things, uh, uh, things going on in the world just because, you know, we can. First of all, Tracy Morgan getting arrested, DUI thoughts. I read that today. I yeah. can't believe it. I, I love him. I never saw Tracy... Um, and all the time I knew him, I never saw him drive. <laughs> <laughs> he was in New York. Now he's in L.A. He got arrested in exactly. Hollywood. Yeah. I mean, at some point, I'm going to get like a... Uh, well, you know, uh, ride, or, uh, RUI for riding on the subway and talking. <laughs> I don't know how people can get it driving. Well, what in South Dakota you can now ride your horse uh, yeah. drunk, so keep that in mind. So that trip's back on, John. Yeah, <laughs> cool, cool. So cool. no thoughts about Tracy Morgan. I say he didn't do it. Right? No, I'm sure he didn't do it. <laughs> His lawyer says they can prove he didn't. He didn't do anything to be pulled over. Okay, because I yeah. I love him. I love that. That might guy. have been uh, the lawyer character he plays. You always gotta be careful about that. <laughs> and then the, I know this about Tracy. He will talk his way whether he did it or not he will talk his way out he will and he'll keep Nobody talking can talk like Tracy Warren I love that guy he's so filthy when but so funny when I first started working on that show he would just come into my office and talk until I was sobbing with laughter so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big fan of Tracy yeah I'm surprised he didn't talk the cop out of him he tried to talk you into having his baby yeah yeah. he said we needed to have a child and stuff but he said it way different right <laughs> <laughs> that's probably different oh, because, I see. yeah yeah, yeah, I see, yeah. yeah. The, the dialect that whole thing really was a different setup than how yeah. I presented it mm -hmm. and finally uh, what do you think about Oprah and that uh, Million Little Pieces book. 
I don't know. It seems like Oprah pulled a 180 on everybody. Yeah. 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 It did, yeah. yeah. Mm, yeah. She yeah. was the biggest C word you've ever seen yesterday. Mm. I uh, I did not watch it, but uh, I read about it this morning. So that sounds she like sounds like it, interesting television. And she made it all about her because Oprah, whatever, superstar. Mm. Anyway, when does your uh, movie come out? It comes out today. Tonight it does? at the uh, Regent Showcase. <laughs> the Regent Showcase Theater. Which is, uh, I think, Santa Monica and La Brea. Oh yeah. my God. Now, why are you guys, uh, can we do it one at a time? What? <laughs> oh, we just, we, it's the hardest the theater name to remember for some reason. Okay. Regent, so. The Regent Showcase. No, no, I, where? <laughs> the Regent Showcase. Right. The exactly. Regent Showcase. Yeah. Tonight. Yeah. Tonight. Okay. Tonight. And uh, can everybody. people buy tickets for it tonight? Absolutely. Absolutely. And there's an, op- uh, t- it's opening tonight, and we will be there, and people, the public can come and, uh, and see Seth and, and his employee. <laughs> and I really I apologize. No, no, no. I, I, I really hope you uh, would accept my apology for that. No, because no, as long as you have my baby, we're cool. <laughs> <laughs> because that's just something. It happens to me all, no matter who I'm with, people are always like, who are you to the other guy? Oh, yeah. We need to get you a t-shirt. Like <laughs> John, we're getting you a t-shirt. I'm John, gosh darn it. That's you know, great. something like that. That's a little you wordy. You can't go through life giving people T-shirts every time you make a mistake. <laughs> I keep you that in mind, learn. Seth. Wow, that's that's really big. Is that your thought of the day, the quote of the day? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, right. Jack. Keep that in mind. Okay. T-shirts don't solve your problems. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I know you have to move on to the next radio station because they're yelling at us. So we will let you go. Thank you guys so much for Thanks coming for in. Us. Yay! See Yay! this movie, and you can see it where. Uh, the Regent Showcase. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for coming in. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Guys.